episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL-TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Smart Substitutions. I'm Katie, and as usual, I'm joined by Elizabeth and Beth, who will tell us about their recipes. So Beth, tell us what you chose today. Okay. Hello, hello. Um, I decided to make something that I, I hear lots of folks do, uh, which is use applesauce that, to replace the oil in a baked good, and I chose brownies. So it was applesauce brownies. Um, the There's uh, different uh, opinions on, on the web about whether you can 100%, you know, do one-to-one -one for oil versus uh, uh, applesauce, but this recipe called for two tablespoons of melted butter too. So half a cup of room temperature, unsweetened applesauce, um, the, the butter, cup of sugar, two large eggs, three quarters of a cup of cocoa, and then just half a cup of flour and some vanilla. Um, you bake it in, at 325 on a, the lower part of the oven. And another thing that I thought was interesting about this was you put all the wet ingredients in and then it tells you to sprinkle the flour on it. I don't know what that does except probably said who knows um and so um the other thing they said which I just laughed out loud about was the best uh to store them overnight and not not eat them yet you know like really let them uh sit uh I did let them sit for a few hours I was pretty good about it I'd say and they were they were very tasty um, I don't have a picture, but uh, the website, did I, did I say it was recipe for perfection? Recipe for perfection, I'm sorry, dot com is where I got it. And um, it did make kind of a sheen on it that sort of looked like frosting as opposed to how there's a crinkle to the brownie typically. So I thought that was interesting. It was very tasty, very um, moist and uh, loved by all ages. That's cool. I've heard of that before too, and I've never tried it, but I've heard that it does make it uh, just a little bit more moist than using oil. So that's cool. Awesome. Yeah. 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 I'd recommend it. And did you just use um, like regular, like Mott's applesauce or what did you? Um, I did. Well, I went to Arbor Farms and got, it was not, you know, it was like their um, brand, but I would have found that um Cadia, I think Cadia, C A D I A, but uh unsweetened is key and also room temperature, not cold. Unsweetened. Okay. Got unsweetened. It. Yep. Yep. And that's easy to find, really. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I actually hadn't heard of that um as okay. a substitution. So that's cool. Yeah. My sister in law used to do it a lot when our kids were little, and I just hadn't even thought of it. So yeah, yeah, I uh do recommend it. So um Elizabeth. What did you make this time? Okay, um, so I, well, let me give a little background. So my, when I go to Knight's local restaurant, uh, I love to get a burger there. And I always get a burger with a sauteed onion and mushroom and um, sharp cheddar cheese, okay? And it's the best, right? But, um. I'm living on the West side now and I've been going to nights a little bit more. And I was like, you know, I can't like, I really shouldn't be having like, well, I mean, people do can do whatever they want, but for me, I'm like, this is a little too much red meat for me. So anyway, so I have been not doing that as much, but then I was recently at old town, other local restaurant, and they have a fabulous tempeh burger, which I also put onions sauteed onions, mushrooms, and sharp cheddar cheese on. So mine is a little bit of a substitution slash recreation because I thought I'm going to make my own tempeh burgers, but, try, you know, cre try to recreate the flavors of the Knight's burger that I love to get. And I've never done this before. I looked up a bunch of different recipes and ended up combining some different 
ones. I'll send the one that's closest to what I did. A lot of them called for um, like, uh, like, um, like ch blending the te the tempeh so that it, then like you know you add in a bunch of different ingredients and form them into patties. But um, the burger that I get at Old Town, which is a tempeh burger, is like a slab of marinated and then cooked tempeh, which is what I wanted to do. So I found a recipe for doing that. It called for the tempeh. And then you marinate it in half a cup of balsamic vinegar, a quarter cup of maple syrup, a quarter cup of low sodium soy sauce, five cloves of minced garlic, and a quarter cup of olive oil. Um, I never have maple syrup in the house. It's not a flavor that I like. And I think if I do this again, I will get some because I substituted honey, but that the maple syrup would have given that like a little bit of that maybe smoky or mapley flavor that I think was key. And I also cut this recipe way in half because I was just doing a little, this was like for two eight ounce blocks and I didn't do that. So anyway, so I used honey instead, another substitution. And um, then I sauteed up my onions and mushrooms, which was delicious. I had my sharp cheddar ready to go um basically you put you whisk all the stuff together in a in a shallow dish and then you add the tempeh in and you kind of toss it and it said you can marinate for at least an hour but up to 24 hours um i ended up doing it for like six because i put it together during like my lunch break and then had it later for dinner that was totally fine um and then it's i mean it's easy to do you know you preheat the oven to 350. Um, you're supposed to line a baking sheet with parchment paper. Um, it says don't throw away the marinade in the recipe. You bake the tempeh for 25 to 30 minutes, and then you're supposed to brush it um, with the leftover marinade kind of um, 15 minutes through and then flip it over. And said so that gave more flavor. So I did that. And um, it was really great. So um, I really liked it. And it definitely captured, um, you know, it doesn't, Okay, it wasn't like a night's burger, but it was delicious and it it was certainly probably healthier. And um, you know, I'm not vegan, so I threw the cheese on there. That's great. And um I really liked the marinated strategy. I didn't want to make patties. I kind of find like the crumbled tempeh a little bit like texturally unappealing for me. So I like it in the blocks. Um, there was an option in the recipe which folks can see to pan fry it as well, but baking it was what I wanted to do. And um, yeah, I think it's not something I'm going to make all the time, but if I'm craving that like burger and I've had some red meat lately and I don't want to do that again, I'm totally going to keep it in my back pocket and, and throw these together and it's delicious. So uh, that was my substitution. That sounds so good. I love tempeh and I've also never cooked with it before, but like everything that you said about it, like not wanting it ground, I like a slab of it. I like it marinated, like all that sounded like perfectly exactly how I would make it and, or how I like to be served it. <laughs> Where'd you get your tempeh? I did get brinery tempeh okay. um, because that's what I'm most familiar with and I like it. So they have it at a few different places, Arbor Farms. Um, is where I got it, but um, I'm sure, I, you know, there's tempeh, you can get other tempeh too, but that's the one I have the most experience with that I think is super good, so. That's a very good tip. I love the brinery, so I definitely will get that kind, and I'm going to make this. Sounds Yeah, awesome. it's good. It's good. I, I don't um, typically... I don't cook tempeh. I, I I don't order it. It's not, I don't know. I think it's it's definitely got more of a mental kind of thing about like, I, you know, soy. Uh, and I'm just a dork that way. But um, but that sounds really tasty and putting some cheese on it. But now the problem is I am going to definitely need to go to nights later. And I was already <laughs> like in the back of my head and that just sealed it. So right. bummer. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, that sounds it's, nice. It's funny you say that because I told my mom about this and she was like, yuck. <laughs> she was like, I'll never do that. And I was like, I get for like the soy tempeh thing for some people, it's just not, it's an unusual flavor for sure. But um, 
I don't mind it. And you know, so if we ever get it, you know, in the house, I'd be willing to try it that way. Try it. Yeah, exactly. Yep. All right, Katie, your turn. All right. Well, I made easy vegan peanut butter maple ice cream. And this is from Melissa Clark from New York Times Cooking.com. And I just wanted to mention very quickly that I wasn't subscribed to New York Times Cooking for the longest because I hate just subscribing to stuff online. There's a block, mental block that I have. I don't like doing it. But I recently got my subscription back because I found out that with if you have the Google Play Rewards app, I don't know if you can do this on an iPhone or if you have to have an Android, but if you have this app, it's a quick survey app and I've had it for years, like 10 years. You take like 30 seconds to take a survey and you earn money from it that you can use in the app store, right? But you can pay for your New York Times cooking subscription with it. Just recently found that out. It was a victory day for me. So I'm happy to be back. And um, this is one of the first recipes that I found um, after getting my subscription back. So vegan peanut butter maple ice cream. Um, you first take your maple syrup. It's about three quarters of a cup and you're gonna simmer it on the stove, stirring it occasionally until the mixture reduces by a third. So you're gonna end up with about a half of a cup. And then you take it off the stove and let it cool and you still want to be stirring it occasionally as it cools so it doesn't harden or whatever i don't know what it would do but stir it you know then um you take your oat creamer and this is your substitution right so rather than using milk or um cream in your ice cream you're using oat creamer like a coffee creamer um i got oatly brand from meyer um so you take that and some peanut butter, vanilla and salt and your maple syrup that you've reduced. And it says to put it in a blender or food processor, but processor, but you can also use an immersion blender, which is what I did because whenever I can, I will, because it's easy to clean and I just like it better. So you blend that until it's smooth, like 30 seconds to two minutes. Um, and then you pour the ice cream into a loaf pan. One of my favorite things is a ice cream recipe that doesn't use an ice cream maker. I have an ice cream maker, but I find it very cumbersome to use. It's big. You have to plan ahead if you want to freeze the bowl and like, it's just a lot. So I love an ice cream recipe where it goes straight into the freezer like this one. Uh, you just cover your loaf pan and place it in the freezer to harden overnight or for at least four to six hours is what it said. So the first day that I made this, I put it in the freezer for like five hours, took it out about 10 minutes before we were going to eat it. And um, it was almost, almost too soft. So it was a little bit, run I mean, it was like soft serve ice cream. So it wasn't bad, but it was like a little bit runnier than I would like. And then the second day I took it out like 10 minutes before I wanted to eat it. And it was like hard as a rock. <laughs> so I would say... First day, I would like not take it out 10 minutes before I wanted to eat it, just take it out like right as I wanted to eat it. And then second day, take it out like a half an hour before you're wanting to eat it because it definitely freezes pretty hard. Um, but then you uh, serve it. It says, suggests that you serve with chocolate shavings, chocolate sprinkles, or vegan hot fudge if you like. I had some chocolate sprinkles. So I put those on top. It is not the prettiest picture, but I have one. Trust me though, this tastes amazing. This was so good. I really, really loved it. And um, just since you mentioned earlier, Elizabeth, that you don't like maple syrup, I couldn't taste the maple in this. It's a very, very peanut butter forward. And I believe that's just in there to give it a little more sweetness. Um, but yeah, I couldn't really taste the maple. I love maple, so I would almost put like more in. I don't know if that would affect the texture or whatever, but um, overall, this was just tastes like peanut butter ice cream to me, which is like maybe in my top three flavors of ice cream. So I loved it and I will definitely make this again, particularly in the summer. Yeah, <laughs> sounds really good. Did you scoop it out of the loaf pan or did you like cut it into like slices <laughs> I scooped it okay. but 
now that you said that, that might be a good idea to do like slices of it would be a good plan. Yeah, for sure. That sounds super good. I should have uh, given you a ring and seen if I could borrow some maple syrup. Cause you... <laughs> yeah, I always do. <laughs> <ask. laughs> sure. You know, anytime, cause we buy it, I buy it from Costco. So um, yeah. Yeah. Lots of name dropping of, of uh, <laughs> brands and stuff today. Um, I do want to mention something and because that just sounds like something that because my mom doesn't have dairy, she would love that. And I, because I'm a really great daughter, I would want to make it for her, but everyone else would like it. But um, I thought I, I was uh, trying to make her something else for the substitution uh, foray. And um, so I made uh, green fried green tomatoes. Uh, but I, so I learned though, that, you know how you can, you add uh, vinegar to milk to make buttermilk. Yeah. You can do that with um, non-dairy milks too. Oh, cool. I didn't so, know that. Yeah, can, I didn't know that either. Can non-dairy milks get as like thick as, like, can you basically, can you get like a whole, like a whole milk texture in a non-dairy milk? So I think that's a really interesting question. I was just talking about this yesterday um, because I was looking at a recipe that I have that calls for half and half, but I was like, but it also says you can substitute it with coconut milk. Oh, that and makes I was sense. like, well, does that mean that coconut milk gets as thick as that? And could I also, could, could I use whole milk if I could use coconut milk? It was a whole conversation that I was having. So I guess my answer is, I don't know, but I would like to. <laughs> so I do want to say often when it, something calls for whole milk, if I only have some coconut milk, that's what I use. Okay. I mean, it depends okay. on what I'm making, but like in, you know, something that's going to be cooking and maybe not pudding, but, um, you know. Gotcha. But it, I, I quite often will sub. Okay. Yeah. I was, that's the yeah. one thing I can think of that does when you, it's really thick, but yeah. yeah. Cool. Right. There we go. All have right. It. Anybody want to name, name drop one more brand? <laughs> <laughs> Any more name dropping? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching Recipe Share. Be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes we talked about and to share your own in the comments. Join us next time when our category will be pasta bakes. We are looking forward to seeing what you've been making, so thanks for sharing. Recipe share, recipe share, share a little recipe with recipe share.